Okay, welcome to the sixth IDD webinar. Whether you are joining from Tensize Meeting or YouTube live streaming, welcome everyone. Today, we're going to have two incredible presenters, Jiang Nan and Sanjita from Rochester Institute of Technology. And our topic will be about social interactions in augmented reality games, which they have presented at ACM Chi Conference on Human Factor in Computing System this year. First, we'll welcome Jiang Nan. Jiang Nan will introduce her recent research on understanding social interactions in location-based games as hybrid spaces, coordination and collaboration in reading in Pokemon Go. Jiang Nan, she is a computer science, science PhD student in the Nantic Geo Game Media Research Lab at RIT, research for under the HC, uh, HCI and UX field. Especially, it focuses on exploring the natures and possibilities between human and the physical environment in this digital era through AR technology. And let's welcome Jiang Nan. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Wei, for introducing me and um, reading this long title of our research. Uh, so I will try to screen sharing my slides. Uh, so everyone good to see my slides right now? Yes. Okay, great. So uh, greetings from Rochester. Uh, my name is Jiang Nan. I'm doing research at the Niantic RIT Geogame and Media Research Lab. So today I'm going to present our work in the CHI 2023. So the title uh, is Understanding Social Interactions in Location-Based Games as Hybrid Spaces, Coordination and Collaboration in Rating in Pokemon Go. So I highlighted the two words hybrid spaces in the title, which means uh, they are the core of our research today. So what is hybrid space? Surely speaking, hybrid spaces are where people experience the computational mediated reality overlaps the physical reality. So we can imagine there are two circles. The first circle is the computational media reality, which means they are uh, AR, VR, or anything you can tell. Maybe it's a cyberspace, something like the uh, the Zoom meeting like we have now. And the next circle is the blue one. So this is a real world. When they have the overlapping place, so the hyperspace is here. So hyperspace today is a common place, although it's a term coined in 20, 2017, which is much younger than most of us. Uh, and, and there are two basic formats of that. The first is hybrid gathering, which is our today's topic. And the other is hybrid realities. So hybrid gathering is something very usual to see in today's workplace. So in the image, we can see eight people sitting around the table and um, some of them have the iPads, um, the computer in front of them. So they have the eye contacts in person, they can do handshaking, they can do like call outs, but also they can uh, typing things into the cyberspace, they can talk to people via the online sessions. So we call this a hybrid gathering. And hybrid realities is also a form of hybrid space. For example, we can see in the picture, a person wearing a head mounted device. So we can imagine there's something like VR in the head mounted device and they can see the uh, VR. And also they can precise the wall through their hands. They can smell things in the kitchen. So this is a hybrid reality. So hybrid reality do not require like a gathering of people, only one person can uh, experience the hyperspace. Although uh, in our daily life, actually the hyperspace is much more complicated it, because it can be anything, a mixture of hybrid gathering and hybrid realities. So on uh, hybrid spaces, uh, one of the exa key examples of such seminal uh, locative media is location-based games. Location-based games are um, a type of game uh, integrating the mobile web and um, global position system, blending our physical environments with a digital layer of location-based information as a mobile interface and blurring our boundaries of traditional cyberspace and physical space. And as we mentioned that a location-based game actually is the key uh, example of the, uh, the hybrid space. 
So the examples of location-based games can be um, Pokemon Go, Pikmin Bloom, Ingress, and um, uh, the very latest one by our lab uh, is called Hunter Monster, Monster Hunters Now. So uh, those kind of games support players with locative information through mobile devices and allow them to play in physical places. This new format of locative gaming has attracted huge commercial and academia attention. Um, and um, to be noted, in this research, we are using location-based game called Pokemon Go. And you also notice that there are some AR com components in the game. We, uh, we can see some um, Pokemon that overlap in the physical world. However, uh, we are not focusing on the hybrid reality. We are focusing on the hybrid gathering in this research. This is because AR features require high performance and um, batteries and also the lo localization technologies, which are not matured in Pokemon Go. Um, so in our previous studies, we found that users do not turn on their AR cameras to play those games. So we would uh, use other props to understand the AR aspect of hybrid spaces in our future works. So our uh, another presenter today, Danzida, will uh, do the uh, do the uh, the future works for that. Okay, so um, here's a short video to describe how people play Pokemon Go get together. So there's a feature called raid battles. People have to gather in at a gym and um, they can choose whatever Pokemon they want to use to defeat a boss in the gym and take over the location. So the egg will hatches and um, the raid battle begins. Yeah, the gameplay is not complicated, but uh, there are some very complicated social interactions in the hybrid space. Uh, and this is because in the COVID-19, so unsurprisingly, people cannot go out, people are experiencing lockdown. So the company uh, Niantic introduced remote raid passes in Pokemon Go and on April 15th, 2020. So on, before that, people have to gather near the gym's physical location where raid battles occur to raid. So this means uh, people probably uh, game with people they already know in the uh, same location. However, after we have the remote pass, people can join the raid battles from whenever they want. So for example, I am located in Rochester, but I want to play a raid battle in NYC. So I have my friend Wei to invite me here. So I have the raid pass. I can play the game uh, wherever I want. Uh, to be noted, at least one person have to be in person. So uh, in this image, I took this from LA last summer. So three boys are playing the game in person. One of them inviting players online. So they probably from other cities, from other countries. And now they are forming a hybrid gathering here. So why we want to research on this? So uh, one reason is this is a very complicated and unknown social interaction. So before that, uh, research has tended to focus on person to place interactions, like how people react to those hybrid reality, how to uh, explore their physical surroundings. However, they overlook um, person to person interactions, which is a key aspect of social interaction as the process of social exchange between individuals by its in, uh, definition. Uh, on the other hand, uh, previous studies found that location based games can both positively and negatively impact people's social life. Um, in a good way, people play the game can strengthen their uh, social ties and supporting wellness and physical health. But in a bad way, uh, because they play in a, a physical location, they are using their mobile phones, they are traffic around them. So um, they have the safety concerns and the game might threaten their safety and privacy because you are sharing location information with others. 
So this is really important to understand how location-based games as hybrid space could influence people's benefit, uh, uh, sorry, uh, be beliefs, perceptions, and behaviors in social interactions. Uh, and, and most importantly, hybrid gathering would be a trend in social computing. Without exploring the social interactions in such scenarios, we could not understand uh, the challenges and opportunities in this area. Uh, so before moving on to the uh, methodology part, we want to introduce the uh, technique we use called games as props. So uh, before uh, we have the term called magic circle, we in our understanding is the game concept and the visual elements in the game would have a boundary between the real world and the game world. For example, it's really uh, easy to understand that um, Pokemon is nothing, uh, is not something existing in our real world. So this is something only in the magic circle. However, as the definition of game expanding these years, we gradually understand that uh, there's a genre of game called serious game. So they are not designed for pure entertainment. For example, um, Pokemon Go is a serious game, which means Pokemon Go is not designed for people only to have fun. They are designed for people to work out. They are designed for people to know more people. They are uh, designed for people to explore their surroundings. Uh, so they have other social purpose or educational purpose um, other than the pure entertainment. So meanwhile, researchers have drawn attention to those games and to understanding bigger problems, issues in the social area through these magic circles. So like this, so the boundaries between the magic circle and the real world actually is blurred. And we using this as a props to understanding the hybrid space social interactions. So we have three layers research questions. First, how do players coordinate and collaborate in the hybrid gathering format in Pokemon Go? Second, what kind of issues and challenges do they face when they doing the um, coordination in the, uh, in the uh, hybrid space. And third, what kind of design implications can we make for those games and also uh, the non-gaming scenarios, for example, hybrid education. So we'll, uh, we will unpack this in the, early, uh, in the later uh, slides. So our user study consists of two parts. The first is data collection. So we are sponsored by Niantic. So we are going to the uh, sub uh, Reddit uh, Pokemon Go, r slash Pokemon Go to recruit participants. So why do we want to do interview rather than something called quantitative like um, questionnaire or survey, which sounds more easier? Because uh, as we mentioned earlier, this is really about your um, perceptions, beliefs and behaviors, which is really qualitative data. We want to uh, sit down and have a in-depth conversation with our users. And luckily we got 41 players from eight countries aged uh, around 20 to 65. And we uh, do the interviews via Zoom, which is semi-structured interview. We asked a lot of why, and can you give me some example, those kind of questions to understand more about their lived experience. And after the 41 uh, interviews, we feel good about our data. We are uh, reached the data saturation and then we move to the data analysis. So we use the very classic method called thematic analysis. Uh, we coded the data for two rounds. The first round is in vivo, which means we use uh, interviewees their own words to describe their behaviors. And in the second round, we use pattern method to code the data to find the potential themes uh, to structure the semantic map, which help us to understand the findings. Okay, so uh, this is the semantic map we have. So this is on the higher level of our findings. We will uh, unpack the detailed things in the uh, later slides we are showing this just want to uh, let audiences understand that these things are connecting with each other which means uh, they have potential connections 
for example, players higher rating frequency can cause their coordination challenges. Before the um, rating become hybrid, people probably only uh, play the game with two or three friends locally. However, when the high hybrid space come in, uh, they can play uh, the game with uh, all people from all over the world. So they made the problem to coordinate things uh, with people maybe from other countries. Probably they don't speak the same language. So this is how things connecting together. And um, to under uh, to answer the three research questions, now we want to um, answer them one by one. So first, coordination and collaboration. So in one sentence, novel collaborative experience when gaming, we found that. And um, what is the novel collaborative gaming? So first, um, there's a new, new dy dynamic of in-presence. So before that, in-presence means all people in one location, co-located, everyone meet each other face-to-face. -face. However, when people play in a hybrid space, some people are online, some people are in person, so they have a different dynamic. Uh, they have to speak to other people um, by mouth, but they need to type things in their social media to keep in touch with online players. So uh, also in a good way, many players mention the word inclusion. So they feel the game becoming more inclusive than before. Uh, which means uh, before that, some people, maybe they are not or something, they cannot play the game in the nighttime because there's a curfew in the game to protect the younger players. But now they can join other time zones gameplay, which is much more convenient for them. Also another example is for mobility disabled people, they have more chances to play the game uh, in a more comfortable uh, home settings. And um, the other keywords is with strangers. So obviously people have more chances to uh, connect with strangers online. They can play the game with uh, people they never met before. So this is actually caused uh, to kind of voices. For some people socially oriented, uh, they feel good about it. They want to know more people, they want to chat with strangers. But for some goal oriented or challenge oriented people, they might be kind of reverse about it. They don't sure about playing with strangers because they care about to win the game. They want to have a very clear understanding about their teammates game, the game strategy, their game levels. So they don't want to have those onshore moments when uh, matching with some strangers. Um, that is caused by the extended international community. So the community before maybe only 20 or 30 people in a local uh, Facebook group or something they coordinate to play a game. But after that, they have a maybe over 200 people in their community. They have people from all over the world to uh, choose from to play the uh, uh, raid. So uh, this dynamic caused issues and challenges and we summarize as interability issues. There are three layers. First on uh, is communication features. So to protect the teenager players, there is no communication features in the game. However, this costs all users to use third-party applications, for example, WhatsApp, Facebook, Discord, Reddit, uh, whatever they can use to communicate with users. Uh, so this can interrupt their experience when they're swapping between apps when they play the game. They need to come back from maybe Facebook to the Pokemon Go when they want to chat with their online friends. Uh, during the game, obviously. And um, this caused interru interruption during the experience. Uh, and also more severely, so the other issue is about the information ethic among the group. Um, the co-located versus remote read users have different amount of information when they play the game. So many users um, mentioned that when they played in person, they have a very smooth communication with other players. So they can talk to others, they can have eye, eye contact, they have body language, but they just ignore the online users, not intentionally, but it is not convenient 
because we mentioned the interruption experience swapping between the apps. So this caused unfairness and um, kind of people don't like the hybrid space experience because of that. And most importantly is the leadership role. So there's no leadership role in the game. Everyone is playing as a teammate. However, when the community is becoming much more bigger and um, people are from different cultural backgrounds. So uh, we need some moderator roles in the game and also in the community to um, maintain the harmony to avoid any conflicts, avoid any cyber bullying things happening in the in the in the community. So these are the interoperability issues. Based on that, we have three uh, design implications to make. First, we think although uh, the hybrid uh, hybrid playing can cause a series of problems on uh, return regarding the interoperability issues. We want to keep it because this can um, benefit users with different needs and preferences. And then we want to solve the interoperability issues. So communication features should be incorporated into hybrid spaces applications. Although we have some concerns about, you know, we don't want people to alert the teenager users because they are sharing location information. However, people can, uh, the designers can design some basic uh, like pre-designed um, text in the game, or they can use AI to um, moderate the conversations to avoid any cyberbullying or some dangerous conversation. And users should be able to exchange information transparently and seamlessly. And finally, uh, new features should be designed to support and stimulate leadership and mentor-mentee relationship in location-based games. This can also be applied to non-gaming contexts, for example, education. Things hybrid classroom is a trend uh, in the very near future. Okay, so uh, lastly, we want to introduce, uh, we want to discuss the uh, discussion and conclusions. So we have uh, two um, limitations of our work. First, we only recruited uh, very experienced players uh, so in the future work, we want to recruit more uh, new players or even non-players from various demog uh, demographic backgrounds. For example, it is very interesting to know how non-players to um, understand those location-based games in a hyperspace. And second limitation is we only use qualitative method. So uh, the qualitative method help us to understand your feelings in a very deep way. However, uh, quantitative method would be helpful to understand and uh, to group users by different group personalities, because we mentioned that some of them are socially oriented, some are very goal oriented or challenge oriented. So our future work is to leverage mixed met methods. Um, overall, to conclude our contributions of this work is an updated understanding of location-based games, live experiences uh, with an emphasis on person-to-person -person interactions in hybrid gathering rating format. We present newly ident identified social dynamics in a hybrid community. And secondly, an understanding of the user experience issues occurred when players leverage third-party applications to communicate in the Pokemon Go created hybrid space. And finally, design implications for the future design for location-based games and other hybrid spaces, even not in the gaming context. So that is all for um, our work. And um, uh, this is a reference list. And I'm happy to take any questions and comments. Uh, and if you want me to go back to any slides, uh, there are some. There's a number in the in the right corner. Okay, thank you, Jiangnan, for the incredible speech. And um, I will firstly have have a personal question because I I play actually play uh, Pokemon Go in two thousand back in two thousand eighteen and nineteen where there are no like hybrid mode of the battlefield. And I will um walk to a place near the Harvard GSC, which is called the Sanders Theater in the snowy day, just to play the uh just to re uh, play the battlefield with people. And that is really sucks because it's a uh, really snowy and cold. 
So yeah. I think the hybrid mode is that definitely better in this case. But um, I wonder that at first, the feature of Pokemon Go, the game, was precisely that it was a location-based game. So yeah. the AR feature is actually made for the location-based feature. Mm -hmm. But now, with the emphasis of the remote race, does the current strategy deviate from the original intention? And mm -hmm. if location-based is not that necessary, why do you play in AR? Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, that's a awesome question. So, um, actually, uh, first, uh, I would say, uh, location based. So the designers of Niantic, uh, still want to push hard about the location based game. So they don't allow users to, uh, unlimitedly to use the remote pass. It's uh require money to buy that. It's really expensive in the money in the app. So as you mentioned that if it's in the extreme weather like snowy or they feel sick or something they can stay at home for sure they can um, pay like five dollars or something to buy a remote pass but uh playing in the location like co-located is free so for most players they will say on uh, 80 percent of their time is playing in person like in location based however maybe 20 percent ish they play online uh so i guess um we do not have that much concern about people moving from location based to totally online. So uh, also you mentioned the AR uh, feature, which is a very good point. So uh, in our interview, some people mentioned that if they play at home, then they feel more comfortable to turn, turn on the AR camera, which is very surprisingly opposite as our understanding, right? So. Uh, in a location-based game, it's outside, so they have some safety concerns or data privacy concerns, like whether I turn on the camera would like recording my location a little bit or something. But in the home, they feel more comfortable because if their Wi-Fi is connecting in a more um, private environment, so this is their um, private room, I guess. So they feel more comfortable to put the Pokemon Go in their living room. So, yeah. I guess it's answer your question. No, that's really well, thank you. And I wonder if there's like any data that shows when people are playing rem rem remotely playing the games, it will like have a steady increase uh, on the data, like they spend more time playing at home. Yeah, sure. Uh, we will do that uh, later because uh, as we mentioned, the biggest limitation of this work is we only do the qualitative data, so we cannot like specifically ask them like how many like hours you play online or something but uh in the future we definitely will go have on um, the survey or questionnaire to uh, let them self-tracking and give us more accurate data on that so we can have maybe 200 people report that and we can compare before and after now because it's only 41 i guess it's a comparably small data um base so yeah yeah we're looking forward to your next step of the research. Yeah, thank you so much. It's awesome questions. Any other questions? You can also type um type in the chat. 